Hey, hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you are having a fantastic start to your day. And hopefully you still remember who the heck I am and what this face represents because I think I've been gone from this channel for, let's say, a month or two, right? So let me try to fill you in on what exactly I've been up to all this time. But basically, I've been able to kind of spend a month of time just rewriting the entire website. I tore down everything that I had previously and just rewrote everything from scratch. And now everything should be mobile ready, which means that if you are browsing the website on your phone in this skinny, skinny resolution, everything should be browsable and the font isn't really, really microscopic tiny anymore. And I've been able to rearrange everything so that hopefully it's a lot easier to find the videos that you're looking for. All right, so that's what I've been up to. And today's video, I wanted to talk about something completely different. And the idea is I wanted to go over a common mistake that I'll find in a lot of my students' code. And, you know, this is something that I find in interns' code as well. So what exactly is this? Well, it is a pretty bad coding style that a lot of beginners will typically adopt because they really don't know any better. So I wanted to also kind of talk about this idea of separation of concern that you should implement inside of your applications that will help you kind of separate your code into little, little small areas that are siloed off from the main routine of your application. And this will help you kind of maintain your code a little bit easier in the future. So enough talk, let me bring you to a real world, a somewhat real world example right inside of Xcode and right over here. Okay, so I have a simple, simple kind of proof of concept project loaded up. And basically the two things that we want to look at are these two files. Uh, first one is a bad code controller. And this controller contains a lot of bad coding style. And then secondly, we have separated concern controller. And this is the magical file with a lot of the code cleaned up and kind of properly written to you know, a certain degree. So why don't we first start off with what exactly is inside of bad code controller? And we'll talk about how we can clean up some of the code here. All right, first thing we have to kind of understand about this project is that we have some variables up at the very top of the file that you know sort of represents the data that you have, uh, whether or not it's in a loading state and some kind of spinning loader view, which is a UI activity indicator view with a white large style. Not that that's important, but let's move on to the view to load function, which is relatively large, starting at line 17 and ending on, you know, line 50 down over here. So what exactly is the bad part about this view to load function? Well, why don't we kind of look at the actual code, right? So the first part starts on line 24. We are putting the application in some kind of loading state with is loading being true and loader view starts animating so that you can see it. We reset the home feed data thing to nil so that we empty out the data. And then we finally reload the table view so that it's emptied out. And then the next thing we do is we actually perform the data fetching from some kind of server somewhere using a URL session data task. And inside of here is typically where you would process all of your JSON data. In this particular use case, we are using JSON decoder, and uh, this helps us decode some kind of home feed object. And then right after we get all that data, we move on to another task that we can separate out. But basically this code down here will set up our home feed data object we will say that you know we are no longer loading, so we said that's a false. We stop anim animating the spinning loader view, and then we finally reload the entire table view with the data that we fetched back from the internet service. All right, so those are all of the tasks that we are performing in one single function. So a lot of you guys can probably already tell that this is probably a bad idea to have or this type of coding style is a bad idea inside of your application because once you start having this long long uh, function it becomes really hard to maintain your code so for example if something goes wrong inside of the data fetching right you're gonna have to start off from all the way up here and you know look somewhere down here and try to figure out what's going on 
So it's a lot easier if you separate your code out into separate functions. And that's kind of where this idea of separation of concern comes in. And the question now is how exactly do you kind of start separating everything and start refactoring your code? Well, you sort of have to identify what these subroutines need to be. So what I mean is uh, we are going to identify three subroutines inside of this view to load function. And the first subroutine is starting up at number one over here. So we put the UI in some kind of loading state, which are these four lines of code right here. Now, the second subroutine is to fetch the data from server of some kind, right? So obviously that is this chunk of code that helps us fetch the data from this URL string. And then the last subroutine is to put the UI back inside of the kind of the finished loading state. And then you just refresh the UI with the data that you got back. So those are the three things that you have to separate out. And now let's move on to the question of how exactly do you perform this code refactoring to implement separation of concern? Well, why don't we head into the separated concern controller file with some of this code cleaned up? All right, so the magic happens inside of viewed load, and you can already tell everything is a lot cleaner because we moved all of that, you know, fetching, reloading stuff into one single function called perform data fetch, which is very, very obvious what it does. So perform data fetch, what actually happens inside of this function? Well, this is down here on line, you know, 23, 24. And the first thing that occurs is we put the UI or put the app in some kind of loading state. And it's really easy to understand because you actually wrote this out in plain old English. So obviously what it does is it puts the UI inside of this loading state. And these four lines is what we had previously. We reset the home feed main data object to nil. We say that, okay, we are loading now. So we set that to true. You know, make sure that you show the spinning loader view by animating it some, somehow. And then you just reset the table view with reload data. And then now what you want to do is you actually want to perform the fetch data after you put it inside this loading state. So we have the first subroutine over here. And fetch data is the second subroutine. And so fetch data is actually this function over here that has some kind of completion block. And I'll kind of tell you what the completion block is for a little bit later on. But basically down here is the same exact code of using URL session, using this URL string, fetching the data, then finally using JSON decoder to kind of get our home feed or our data object back in some kind of Swift object. Now, the final thing that occurs after the success of all this is you call the actual completion block, which is this guy. And the thing that the completion block really allows you to do inside of your code is you can actually implement the third subroutine inside of the completion block area, which is starting from this curly brace to this curly brace over here. So for example, you can say fetch data and you have your completion block here, you hit enter and everything over here is kind of your next subroutine after your data fetch is complete. All right, so the last thing that occurs inside of this entire function call is you kind of just set your home feed object to whatever you got back from your completion block. And then finally you put the UI in the finished loading state, which is this function down over here. You know, you set the is loading data variable to false you stop the animation of your loader view so that it goes away, and then you reload your table view. All right, so that kind of wraps it up in terms of how you separate all of your mini subtasks into separate routines, and doing so allows you to just simply look at this function and you can see exactly what it's doing without kind of seeing this convoluted code inside of your function. All right, everyone, that's going to wrap it up for today's video. Hopefully you were able to walk away from today's lesson with a little bit of insight as to how you can improve your own coding style with some of these code cleaning tips. Now, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. If you want to download the project that you saw in today's lesson that includes the bad coding and the separated controller or concern controller file, 
You can find a link down in the description below. And finally, if you want to support me and what I do on this channel, make sure to check out the couple of courses down in the description box as well. Uh, that's going to be it for me today. I will see you in the very next lesson. Bye-bye, guys.